hundred years from today, somebody's going to drive by this place and say, how in the world does this ever get saved? Yeah, I first came here in the 50s as a kid. At that point, there were thousands of acres probably of, of open space. And all of us living in the area gradually saw that disappear. And here was Bill Ayler coming forward with something else. He was asking that we work together with the cities, the county, and to work with the developers and also ask from us as citizens that we participate in something that was bigger than what we were, a, an organization that could try to save that open space. So I got on the Planning Commission in Rolling Hills Estates and uh, found that uh, people really did hate losing this land. These people would come in with development proposals before the Planning Commission and uh, people said that, you know, we really understand the person has a right to develop this land, but isn't there some way we could, we could preserve it? Um, when we drive through and I talk about all the, the, the wonderful resources we have here and we talk about the preserve, they are just amazed when they drive by and, and, and realize that this is uh, saved for use by residents and guests in perpetuity. It's, it's something that they are very pleased by. The Conservancy has done such a great job with, with their education. Now everyone knows what native habitat is. They started with this third grade program teaching third graders and taking them out in the environment to tell them what a native plant is and what it, how to recognize invasive plants. We ask for parent volunteers for our field trip. We've grown from uh, 10 schools on the peninsula to 23 schools now in the greater South Bay area. We average uh, every year about 2,000 kids now. I lost my husband in 2003 and I was uh, looking for a way to honor him and there was a newspaper article. The Palos Verdes Land Conservancy had an acquisition in progress and we're looking for donations and by giving a certain amount you could have a trail or, or a site named after or dedicated to someone. But I really moved on it once I heard that Annenberg would have a match grant and I gave them a substantial donation and about two years later the cool overlook became that is in honor of my husband. Well actually it was my husband who got interested. We, had, we raised five children on the peninsula and so when he heard that uh, the city was going to be formed in order to preserve that space he wanted to help so he wrote a check for a hundred thousand dollars to preserve the Conservancy. Every year we get around 15,000 volunteer hours and that's really the lifeblood of our organization. There's a empty piece of land in San Pedro called White Point Park that used to belong to the U.S. Army. Almost 30 years it sat there empty, overrun with weeds with a rusty old chain link fence around it. All of a sudden all sorts of people come forward with brilliant ideas of what to do with the land. A woman named Leah Marinkovich from San Pedro was aware of the Land Conservancy and said, what if we could put this into the Land Conservancy and make a nature preserve out of it? Would we be interested? And Bill Ayler said, absolutely, and we will restore the habitat there at no cost to the city. Then Councilman Rudy Savornich formed a task force to study what to do, and he said, my task force has recommended a nature preserve and so I guess that's what we're going to do. An organization like ours can't do it alone. A lot of the grants that we would get would have to come through a city and so we had to had it was a partnership and always has been. Working together and maintaining the preserve and improving the preserve and it's it's quite amazing. So it's a great partnership, it's been working terrifically. There was a wonderful illustration, a group of students from the inner city of Los Angeles and those children would never have seen the ocean before. The benefits that open space provides are numerous. It, it can range from really personal, from uh, it being something that someone feels that they're able to find serenity or to feel refreshed or rejuvenated by being in open space, um, exercise. It helps to provide clean air to our communities. It's the um, open landscapes with the non-permeable surfaces through the nature preserves helps the water quality in our area. Um, it's natural flood control, things like that. You see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that uh, appreciate the, the natural beauty of the area, the, the vistas that we have through, say, Portuguese Bend and the Palos Verdes Preserve, places like Forestal, uh, riparian or river-based habitat in places like George F. Canyon. 
These are, are unique features and you have to go many miles to find something comparable. The one of the things we've done is we've preserved the land. A lot of the habitat is gone and so one of our uh, charges is now to replant, revegetate those areas with native plants. So we have a very active program for doing that. This, this place could be even more beautiful if we were able to really restore what was here thousands of years ago. Um, when we drive through and I talk about all the, the, the wonderful resources we have here and we talk about the preserve, they are just amazed when they drive by and, and, and realize that this is uh, saved for use by residents and guests in perpetuity. It's, it's something that they are very pleased by.